Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie if you are new here and in today's video I just want to do like an everyday makeup look but entirely drugstore makeup. I have in front of me honestly a lot of my absolute favorite makeup it's all affordable it's all drugstore and i just want to do like an everyday makeup look so if you guys want to hang out and see a little everyday makeup look then just keep on watching all right so for eye primer i'm going to use the ulta matte eye primer and since i have longer press-ons on i'm going to use a, bl a brush to blend it up you know i have been creating youtube content for well over four years now you would think <laughs> four years into at least twice a week saying the word blush and brush that i would eventually be able to say the words blush and brush without getting them mixed up you would fucking think right no i genuinely thought that i was going to have to film this as a voiceover because like once a month maybe once every two months honestly which makes it sound not as bad as it is but when it happens it pisses me off um it's so like once a month maybe once every other month maybe it does happen once a month and i just get lucky sometimes but the my complexes gardeners will shape the bushes and listen if you are a longtime viewer of mine or even if you've just seen some of my videos before i unfortunately am always off on gardening day which is fucking thursdays and um the sound of gardening equipment is like one of the things that will make me like quite literally the most violent but the bush shaping tool my cats are fighting the bush shaping tool is by far my arch nemesis um it really doesn't help that where our apartment is located we are like there okay so here's the steps and then here's our apartment right um there's bushes right here there's bushes right down here and then there's bushes all along this side so I just we just got really unlucky that we're just surrounded by bush and I the bush shaping tool is so fucking loud like literally one of the loudest gardening tools I have ever interacted with I don't even interact with them because I don't shape bushes but it's just one of the loudest things that I have ever come across and it annoys me to my core anyways um i have had videos in the past like where i just straight up have had to stop filming and just sit there for like 45 minutes while he shapes the bushes we got woken up by it this morning which i feel like sucks because it's like a very loud way to wake up but in the same breath i guess i'm glad that he's done now and it's not interrupting my filming but where i'm going with that is, is this morning i genuinely was just like how am i going to film it is so loud and then i was like i am probably gonna have to do a voiceover i don't even know if they're done to be honest with you i fucking hope they are but anyways i digress for my pat for my palette i'm gonna use the ColourPop gone matte palette this is my go-to everyday palette it's got everything that i need to create a matte makeup look you know warm tones cool tones light tones dark tones everything in between so this is my go-to makeup look or <laughs> go-to palette i should say this is my like go-to everyday makeup look like i'm actually genuinely kind of surprised i haven't put more of a dent into this palette than there is like i'm surprised i haven't hit pan on a couple of these shades anyways i'm gonna start out with a very small floppy brush and i'm gonna go into the shade powder puff i do like a little bit of depth on my outer corner so i'm not gonna put on a ton but i do just like the way that it makes my eyes look and also as i'm like blending other shades into this and you know just blending in general i will lose a, a little bit of this depth which is okay i just like to start out with my darkest shades so that it is the most pigmented and also 
just so I can have a good deep base on the outer corner. Now, when it comes to everyday makeup looks, and especially when my hair is like freshly dyed red, I do tend to lean very heavily into warm tones. So I'm gonna pick up a slightly larger blending brush and I'm gonna go into Snug as a Bug. I'm not picking up a ton though. And I'm just going to blend this next to and around powder puff and then kind of kick whatever's left on my brush. I don't want the most pigment, but whatever's left on my brush, I'm gonna drag into my crease. I guess we could say that realistically, my everyday makeup is uh, very 2016 coated. But I mean, realistically, like when I got into makeup and like really started doing makeup on a very regular basis and like buying more makeup and, and watching the YouTube videos and like really learning how to blend out eyeshadow and, you know, do all of that um, was very much like 2014, 15, very much the like Morphe 35O palette era, which every once in a while, I'm like, damn, I should get that palette again. Honestly, I liked the 3502 better. The black that was in that palette was fucking divine. It is the same black that's in the Morphe Jaclyn Hill 2 palette, which I still have, but that is hands down one of the best black eyeshadows I have ever used. Okay, apparently I am going more concentrated on the orange in my crease. I don't really know how that happened, but here we are. Okay, and then last, matte shadows. I'm gonna take a much larger, loose blending brush and I'm gonna go into Chase Me as my transition. I will say though that like, first of all, I love like makeup trends and I have done so many different makeup trends on my channel. When grunge came back, I milked that like crazy. But like at its core, I truly don't really care too much about makeup trends. I do makeup that I think looks best on me. I genuinely have never felt as though like clean girl makeup looked good on me. It just wasn't, it's not my style. I already inherently have a much more bold style in like having dyed hair and having tattoos and stuff like that. Like I just genuinely have always had a much more bold style. So I never really felt that like clean girl makeup, fucking hate that phrase to be honest with you, but like I never felt that it was really a style that just like resonated with me. Whereas grunge on the other hand. But with that being said, I think that we're finally, like the pendulum, pendulum is finally swinging back the other way. Like, I mean, I think that there's always going to be certain parts that are going to always have that like kind of more soft glam, clean girl style. But I think in general, like makeup content is starting to swing back into the direction of heavier makeup, more makeup, like bold eyeshadow, you know, liners, all of that. Like I, I genuinely do think that we're starting to come back towards like, I'm seeing a lot of TikToks romanticizing 2016 makeup and like fucking same. So a girl can only hope, you know? And like, don't get me wrong. I will absolutely dabble in a soft glam. I do love a soft glam, like that ballerina core style that was kind of in towards the beginning of this year. That I fucked with. Soft glam is not the same as clean girl in my opinion i think clean girl is very much like natural skin just a little bit of bronzer a little bit of glow and like you're done kind of thing whereas soft glam is still a full base of makeup it's just softer tones pinks peaches like not a lot of depth you know no contouring nothing like that and i love a soft glam i just don't love a clean girl makeup I think another part of that too, whoa, another part of that too is like, um, because I do 
they're looking much better recently because I have had press-ons on, so I haven't been able to pick, but um, having more sparse eyebrows that I have to fill in and I have a specific way that I love to do my eyeshadow, like to do my eyebrows, I personally like, I have never, ever, ever liked the way that my face has looked with just eyebrows on, <laughs> like ever. So I think that that plays into it as well. I'm going in with the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Mighty Morphin. I'm not like caking this on or like really building it up. I'm kind of just doing a very soft layer of it and kind of fluffing it almost all around into the depth, up into my crease, just kind of everywhere. And I gotta take my pinky to get into the inner corner. But yeah, like even when my eyebrows were at their absolute worst and like effectively non-existent, I would sooner, and like I, I'm, I don't actually care about people seeing me like without eyebrows. For fuck's sake, when I was younger and edgy, I straight up shaved my eyebrows off. Like they didn't exist. So I went through that phase, a little alien head. Anyways, I um, would sooner go out with absolutely no eyebrows on, no makeup whatsoever, than I would just eyebrows, nothing else. I think that having like, cause I do, you know, put a decent amount of depth in my eyebrows cause my hair is darker, especially my natural hair is darker. So having like, deep eyebrows that are clearly drawn on and having absolutely no other makeup on always looked very like very stark to me so and that's it honestly that is like my everyday go-to eyeshadow look I always do a wing my favorite liner recently has been the elf expert liquid eyeliner I was honestly having a weird issue my house gets hot like my house gets very hot um during the summer and i'm the type of person that if i see my favorite products go on sale and i know that i only have one on hand or one or two on hand i'll pick one up and i had had a couple of my favorite liner like pen liners in my backup drawer a NYX one and a Positions Formula one, and both of them were like fucking dried out. Same with my my brow pen. Is like, you can tell there's still quite a bit of product in there, and I just opened that within like this past month, and I'm hot, like it's not producing as much brow liquid as it usually does. So I don't know if sitting in my, I don't know if maybe I just had them for too long and they just started to dry out because they. We're in my closet where it's hot for too long. I don't know. But anyways, uh, the Inkwell version, haven't been having an issue with that. So it definitely does take a learning curve if you came from like a pen liner situation. But after a couple weeks, honestly, of doing it every single day, I haven't had an issue. So, and these are like stupid affordable. I want to say they're, I got a two pack from Ulta for like six bucks and they're so black and they're like, there's so much in here. So with that being said, I'm going to jump off and put on a wing. I am going to go do my base off of camera. I'll show you guys all of my drugstore base products when I get back. I'll be back. Okay, so I have done my foundation. I just haven't put on concealer yet. For my primer, I used the NYX Freezy Cooling Primer. Um, definitely probably the most expensive thing I have here besides the palette. Um, and the palette's only more expensive just because it's got 35 shades or 36 shades, whatever. Um, definitely the cooling primer is the most expensive out of all, it, all of it. It's not a need, honestly. I just used it because it's hot as hell in my house and it makes my face cold. <laughs> like, my face feels good right now. I grabbed a spot concealer. I did use a drugstore one, but just a shitty concealer that I don't like. I also used the e.l.f. Halo Glow liquid filter. And then for my under eyes, I put on a little bit of the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Corrector. And for my foundation, my absolute favorite foundation, the A2O Soft Matte Foundation, which is like $4. Get it from Shop Miss A. I talk about this foundation all the time because it is hands down my favorite foundation. And then when my 
concealer choice allows for it. I actually like to put on my concealer like unblended and then do my bronzer and then go back in and blend my concealer. So I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. And I don't use a ton. Honestly, the doe foot pulls out so much that I don't dip back in. Put it underneath my eyes and then on the high points of my face. And for cream bronzer, I'm gonna use the ColourPop Bronze Sticks in La Jolla Cove. I always start out with a little, I don't know, like, my brain always wants to call them bullets. A little one of these guys. And I just dip a little bit in to do my nose. I always take it up in here as well and hit underneath of my lip as well. And then for my forehead, I use a velour puff. I just blend that out. And then once I blend out that concealer, it'll just be a nice seamless transition. I don't know what's going on with that velour puff, but it's not blending how I want it to. So I'm just gonna grab this brush really quick and just see it's like patchy back there it's the velour puff for sure i think it's because it's one of my like super thin ones and so my finger was kind of deciding what was being blended not my velour puff i don't care about this part right here because obviously once i blend out that concealer and then for cream blush i'm going to use the about face cheek freak in quickie yeah certain concealers that i have i can't leave them sitting like this for that long so in that situation i will just put on my cream like bronzer and blush and then i'll put on my concealer spray my face and then blend it out i'm gonna spray my face real quick give that a second so it's not just like wet and then I'm just gonna blend this out I may have waited a little bit too long on my forehead but that's okay and the moisture from the spray and then the dampness from the sponge just kind of reinvigorate that concealer since I let it sit for just a little bit too long okay and then since I had to work a little bit harder to blend out that concealer because I fucked up um, I'm just gonna take my velour puff and then honestly that brush and just go, I'm not picking up any excess product. I'm just kind of going back over where the bronzer and the blush are. I'm just making sure everything is seamless. I'm also gonna put on powder, bronzer and blush anyway. So it's not, you know, like the absolute end of the world. Okay, I'm gonna go set down my face off of camera for kind of like my cheek area right here, I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. For my under eyes, I'll use the Essence 16 Hour. And then listen, this is extra and it's only because neither of these powder foundations are like a perfect shade match for me. For the rest of my face, I'm gonna to mix together the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation in 150C, so it's cool toned, and then the Maybelline Superstay Hybrid Powder Foundation in 118, which is like a little bit too yellow, but together they kind of neutralize each other out and make a nice neutral tone. So I'm gonna go do that off camera. I will be right back. Okay, I did also really quick just do my bronzer off of camera. I used the Milani Baked Bronzer in Dolce. Because when I set my face, I don't set that area. I put powder bronzer directly on top of the unset cream bronzer. So, now my whole face is set. <laughs> and then really quick before I do my cheeks, I'm gonna do my under eyes. And I'm gonna be so honest, when it comes to my under eyes, I like two things. I like to be smoky and like blown out, but I'm lazy and I don't do a ton. I just take a fluffy shader brush like this and I usually pick my like, second darkest shade. If I'm doing like a really, really grungy makeup look, I will go in with like a, a finer smudgy brush and like do the darkest shade. But for an everyday makeup look like this, I will just take this. I will go into Snug as a Bug, tap off some of the excess because I don't want fallout on my face that is has makeup on it. And I literally just start at my outer corner and I just go back and forth and just smudge it out. Sometimes if I'm feeling fancy, I will go in with the, the lightest shade to like soften it if I really need to or if I really just want to like 
do more, but most of the time, this is the extent of what I do. I am likely gonna have to go in with a lighter shade. This is not giving what I want it to give. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab a very, very tiny blending brush and I'm gonna go into Chase Me, pick some of that up, and I keep the brush pointed up and I'm just gonna run this below snug as a bug. And sometimes if I really, really need to because it's like really too much or it's going too low like this one is, I will grab my brow setting brush and most of the time I will just grab my under eye setting powder. Luckily, the brow setting powder that I'm using is a little light so it'll work. And I'm being very gentle with this because I don't want to disturb like the concealer and stuff, but I'm just gonna soften this up a little bit because I want a little too ham. I tried to be cocky and be like, oh, this is all I do. And then did two more fucking steps after it because I got too cocky, you know, it's fine. And then for powder blush, I'm gonna use the LA Girl Just Blushing Blush in Just Natural, just to kind of re-intensify that blush. Now see, I'm not putting on like a ton. I'm just kind of making it look like that cream is more visible than it was. And then I'm gonna put on a little bit of a blush topper. I'm gonna use the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. This is in the shade Cool Coral, which is a little bit more pink. Um, I'm gonna work though. These aren't super pigmented. And then before I jump over and do my highlight, I wanna do a little bit of like a sheer glow on a couple of the high points of my face. So I'm gonna take the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Powder and I'm just gonna do this like on my forehead. Now see, it's not super noticeable, but it does just kind of give a like slightly more natural finish to the skin. Do it on my nose and then I put it on the apples of my cheeks and this kind of softens that blush just a little bit more. The only high point of my face that I don't put this on is my chin. And that is because my chin gets the oiliest the fastest, so I don't need to add extra glow there because within a couple hours, my chin will be glowy on its own. And then last but not least, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of highlight. I'm gonna use the Revlon Skin Lights Highlight in Daybreak Glimmer. My All of my setting sprays are drugstore as well. I use a couple different ones throughout my routine, but they are all drugstore. Um, namely the Makeup Revolution Super Fix Super Hold Misting Spray and then the Milani Make It Last. So all of those are always drugstore, but they are drugstore today. And then um, my lashes are also drugstore. I always use the AOA Studios uh, 3D Foam Ink Lashes. They're like one or two dollars from Shop Miss A. Um, like my absolute favorite lashes. It is really funny, I actually, I genuinely stopped wearing lashes outside of filming. Um, some, it, it, on occasion, I will wear them outside of filming, but like, unless it's a special event or I'm filming, I just like, I genuinely can't be bothered to put on lashes to like, work, which is such a like, stark difference compared to before when I would wear lashes every single day. And then last but not least, for my lips, which I will do off of camera, I'm gonna start out with the Wet n Wild Gel Lip Liner in Bare to Comment. I will contour my lips a little bit with the Milani um, Understatement Lip Liner in Cinnamon Statement. And then for my actual lipstick, I will use the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in Bare Affair. So I'm gonna go do all of that off camera and I will be back to show you guys the final look. Okay, so this is the final look. I also wanted to quickly mention that my mascara, my brows, my liner, like my pencil liner, everything is drugstore. So there is not a single high-end thing on my face. And I love the way that this makeup look turned out. Like I said, this is like one of my go-to, just like I need to do my makeup and I need to look really good, but like I don't want to think about it too much. This is 
what I'll do and I love the way that it turned out so comment down below and tell me about your go-to drugstore makeup products I would love to hear all about that please subscribe if you have not already it would mean the world to me like this video ring the bell do all the things I hope that you guys have an awesome awesome day and I'll see you guys in my next one bye <laughs>